All right. Well, let's start getting bumped up to learn Japanese. Uh, Welcome one, welcome all to Valent Hawks Learn Japanese Extravaganza. Ooh, come on in. To the Ministries of Valent Hawk. I want you to tithe to the Ministries of Valent Hawk. Give me your money, and I will keep teaching you. Of course, that's not how it works. I do it for free. If you give me money, it makes me want to do it more. Ooh, yeah, today we're going to learn Japanese. Ugh. Continue on with you to uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I can't wait. Uh, we're gonna jump right back in. We're gonna hit up those reviews. We're gonna start learning some new stuff. We're gonna go back to that kanji a little bit. Gonna teach you a new kanji. Gonna teach, teach some grammar. Gonna teach you all that good stuff. And that's why I need you to have faith in the process. Keep doing it the way I'm telling you. And if you do it wrong, stop it. Listen to me and do what I say. Hmm. Hmm. This is the way. Pop culture, ladies and gentlemen. All right, 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 all right. Hey. Hit me up with those sweet jazz tunes. Welcome back to Valen Hark's ASMR Japanese language adventure. Let's jump right in. So fresh blank screen and you know what that means? It's time to review, ladies and gentlemen. What have we done up until this point? There it is, the Charter Rooney. Hey, look, day one, day two, day three, day four, day, column one, two, three, and four. If you've made it this far, I hope that you have been following the process that I laid before you. And that you have repeated the old characters as you have started the new characters. If you haven't been doing that, what am I even trying to accomplish with you? All right. For the rest of you, thank you for being such good nice students listening and caring students thank you today we're going to move on with day ooh five and we're even going to hit up six but before we do that you know we got to do that review is back in your notebook things should start looking a little bit like this let me show you here ah e u e o that was column one, by the way. Ha. Key. And if you want, you can connect this. That's up to you. Ku. K. Cool. All right. That was column two. Sa. And you can connect this one, too. Relax. Shi. Su. Se. And. So. That was column three. And uh, then we hit up the column four. Ta. Chi. Tsu. Te. Oh my god, that was a very long toenail for that toe now, wasn't it? Uh, Alright, bring me back to these jammy jams, thank you. So that was the uh, ta, the, the T column. Let's, let's call it that. And uh, that's where you should be at. You should be here by now. And now, I just did them all in order, but your notebook should not look exactly like this. Um, unless you're you're really at the last character and this was your new character as your last entry. But remember, when you end on a character, it should not be the last thing in your notebook for the day. Because if you leave it off having written it once, you're not really doing yourself any favors in the memorization department. So if this was your new character, and the last one that you did for the day yesterday, I really think what you should do, or you know what, let's just leave this here as new, as a marker, so you can see this easier. You should continue on again. I, U, A, O. So, oh my god, that was... Don't, don't try to write as, as fast as me. It's going to look terrible. Oh, I'm learning. Don't do it behind my head. Thank you. And then you should go to that. Chi, tsu, te. And then 
at this point, you might be like, oh, I just did that one, what was it? And you either remember it or you don't. And if you remember it, great. If you don't, do this all again. Maybe once or twice before you close the day out, right? Okay. Make sure you do this review before we jump on to the next column. So we're going to jump on to day day five, column five here. But if you are just sitting down now, getting ready to do this, do not just start from this point in the video. Before you get there, uh, pause this, do whatever you got to do. I want you to write out starting at a uh, and ending at toll. All of them in between. And then unpause this and start doing what we're about to do here, which is boom we are going to do uh, nah because that is number one on day five boom let's start nah friendly reminder to all of you out there open this up and you can find the stroke order uh, if you don't trust your old pal valen hark all right stroke order always keep that in mind before moving on today we're starting with nah so things are getting a little bit more complicated, not too much. Shouldn't be too much of an issue here. Oh my god, this pen. All right. No. And also, this little, like, dealy do right here. This, I, I see it depending on the font or handwriting style. Some people do it like this, some people do it like this, some people do it like that. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure you have this thing there. Um, this font does it horizontally and... This font does it more like calligraphic. Cal calligraphic? Yeah, that's how it's done. So, here, we'll even do it more like that, right? Nah. This is nah. A -E -U -A -O. This will never be pronounced any other way. It is always nah. Okay. Moving on. And by the way, let me, let me make this clear because I had a question before from someone. Because they just see me doing this all in order when I'm doing the videos. Um, I'm just trying to introduce you to them. But really, my suggestion to you would be... Um, when I So if I wrote out nah here. And then I say, oh, this is nah. Okay, moving on. When I say moving on, you should probably pause the video. And go back into your notebook and do... So, and then until you get to nah. And then unpause the video and move along with me that way. So every time I do a new character, if you're trying to follow along with me here, pause it and do that character. Um, if you're here in the live stream, do your best. <laughs> um, I, I, I grant you that this is probably easier for those people watching on YouTube. In a live stream, if I get uh, more people want me to slow down, I will. If you want me to repeat things, I will, and then I'll cut them out of the YouTube video. But let me know if uh, I'm going too fast for you, because that is probably the the best way for you to do it. In between each character, you should be repeating and reviewing old stuff. And remember what I told you two days ago. Um, if you get to the point where you feel like you've written, for example, A, E, U, A, O, like uh, a billion times, and you're already... You, you know in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, that you are done with those for now. You can skip that and start from later in the chart. But you got to be honest with yourself, okay? You're not cheating a teacher here. You're cheating yourself if you're not sure whether you're ready to stop writing those yet or not. Okay? This is for you. So, you know, listen, listen to your heart. What does it tell you? Does it tell you to keep writing them because you don't really remember them? Then do it. Otherwise, I'll leave it up to you. All right. Jeez, Valen, let's move on. With me. Okay, next on the chart there. Me. A, E, Na, Me. Right? Knee. There you go. Knee. And like I said, it's got this little uh, serif thing here. You know, you, the, the way people write these is a little bit different depending on what you're looking at. Let's, what does these people do it? Yeah, they, they did a little serif there too, but you see they're smoother with the, uh, the two strokes there. So as long as it looks something like this, you're fine. Knee. Okay. Ni. 
Dude, all right, here here we go. This is where everybody starts uh, whip, whipping out their little cry tears. Ah, this one's hard. Mm. And then they'll get past this and they'll say, I don't remember how to do it. Ah. So I'm going to tell you right now before you even start, know that that's how this goes for most beginners and relax. Take it easy. Don't worry if you don't remember it, if it's too hard. Take this one slow. Do it maybe uh, a couple times before you repeat everything. That's up to you. So let's go over. Let's check the stroke order. We start with that little dash. I don't know what you want to call it. This little uh, dash here first, right? And then everything after is one roller coaster loop de loop solid stroke. All right? New. One. Two. New. All right? This just looks like a pile of yarn to people who are just starting out. Trust me, when you get used to Japanese, you will read this flawlessly. It will not boggle your mind what it is. Just trust me for now. Write it. So we start with that line. New. Okay. New. Will never be anything different. All right. What do we got next? Hit me up with that chart. We just did new. Now we have ne. Oh, this is the. Uh, here come the anime people. They just love to use this one. Um, again, check the stroke order. Because this is another one that gets kind of complicated over here. Down, and then again, another loop-de-loop -loop solid stroke. All right? One. Ne. All right? One. Two. Ne. And why do the anime people like it so much? Because they just hear it day in and day out on that old anime of theirs uh because this is a very commonly used character and by character i should say word expression i'm not sure how i would put that basically what this means um if you attach this and please do not start attaching this to everything the second i tell you what it means because then you start sounding ridiculous but basically if you attach this to it at the end of like pretty much any sentence something 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 ne Especially if it's like a question mark, eh? it's like, right? Um, God, it's hot today, right? Yeah, something, 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 ne? This is it, right? Um, it's so if it's more of a question, like ne, it's more of like, right? Am I right? <laughs> um, but if it's not, if it's not like a question, it's it's just like ne. It's more of like uh. If I try to localize this instead of just directly translate it, it's more of like, you know... God, today is just the most terrible day on record, you know? It's just this little thing that you throw onto the end, just like we do in English. We have a bunch of different expressions and phrases in English that we tack onto the end to kind of, like, connect to the person we're talking to and be like, you know what I'm saying? Right? This is what that is. So if... Just by learning this character, you can already start throwing a little bit of... Native into your uh, phrases there. Don't go nuts, though. If you start putting this on everything and you're just a beginner and it's clear that you're a beginner but you're trying to use this with everything, you sound kind of silly. Just uh, take it slow with this one, all right? <laughs> and please, for the love of God, don't use this in English. Stop that. Stop saying, oh my God, it's that was the best anime, net. Ugh! I, I am not preaching to the correct uh, choir here on Twitch, I think, but the people who actually live here in Japan, that is very grating on the ears. Odd. Um, okay, all right. Let's move on. That was meh. Next up on the chart? Not that chart. We have no. Look at that. We're already almost done here with uh, column number five, aren't we? No, this is a very important one. Oh, God. Dalen, what are you doing? No. And this one's pretty easy. So you just suffered through those two difficult ones, and now you get to smooth it on into an easy one. It's just like this, one stroke. Right? No. Let's do that a little bigger. No. Okay, what does this mean? 
Uh, if you remember back to our example sentence, hey, what do we got here? No, oh, this is by itself. Okay, so this is used in words too. You could put this in words to construct words, but if this is just by itself in a sentence like it is here, it is the possessive particle. In other words, it's kind of like of. And uh, hey, why don't we jump over to uh, this over here? Remember Jisho that I showed you yesterday? Um, by the way, you do not... I showed you this yesterday that uh, you could type pound sign kanji hashtag if you're born in the last 10 years, I guess. Uh, it used to be called pound sign, kids. All right. Uh, kanji, you do not have to type this. Um, this will take you directly to the stroke order if you type it, but if you just put in no here, it'll just bring up the definition of it. Indicates possessive. Okay, real nice. What I want from you is for you to tell me it means, like, of or something, but technically it doesn't, so... Um, just know that that's possessive particles, that's what that means if you're not... Uh, if you're well out of English class from school or whatever and don't remember what this is supposed to mean. That's what it is. So, basically, you could say... From yesterday, do you remember... Our friend... Watashi? I slash me. Oop. That's what that means, right? So if we write Watashi no Hey, guess what? Of me, possessive particle me would just mean my or mine, depending on the context, right? If something follows this, it is my something. My book. Right? We're not gonna- I'm not gonna teach you book just yet, but if we say watashi no book, watashi no hong is what it actually would be. It's my book. Right? Watashi no inu, which would be dog. My dog. Okay? This is a very handy one, and that's why I'm spending so much time littering the canvas with it. Uh, oh my god. Why did you choose to undo instead of erase? Uh, I don't know. That is no. Alright, one more time. No, very handy. Don't forget this one. It's very easy, too. So, you shouldn't have a problem with it. So, that marks the end of column number five. Na, ni, nu, ne, no. And remember, how you should have been doing this is, uh, let's say you're, you're back at ta, e, chi, tsu, te, to, and then you got over here to na, and then you did, if you wanted to start back at IUAO, if you're still doing those, that's fine. Keep going, IUAO. And you go on and on and on and on until you get back to na. And then that's when you do ni, right? This would all be old. This would be new. And then you do it over again. If you're starting from a, you start again at a, e, blah, 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 until you get back to ni. And then when you get back to ni, that was old, and you uh, move on to, uh, new. And that would be, uh, new. Ah, funny joke. New is new. Uh, okay. Valen, uh, just stop doing that. Boom. And boom. Alright, so that was Nani Nu Neno. And, uh, hey. Let's, uh, why not? Let's hit up, uh, that second column for the day. Day six. Let me hammer home a point here. Oh, hey, we got some questions here. Uh, can you go back over how to write the symbols again? Um, we can. Yes, we can. Uh, which specific ones do you want to go over again? You want to go over all of them, or do you want to go over nani nu ne no? We can do them all. Um, it's pretty quick. And what is, what is this guy? Get out of here with the advertisements. Look, get constantly gotta ban these twitch bots you know i hate them that is perfectly fine let's do let's uh let's do a little review here before we move on because we did go through those fairly quickly nah we're starting with nah today right nah okay one Two, three, 
four. Nah. Just day five, yeah. Perfect. So we will just do day five. And we're on a little bit of a delay, so... Um, let's go back here. Uh, excuse me. Excuse... Uh, there it is. Okay. Remember, you can check here for the stroke order as well. Okay. So that is not... Reaper Links, thank you for joining, and thank you for following, too. Um, you are welcome here at any time. Uh, hey, pull up a seat. Uh, pull it up. And get on in. Um, these are all uploaded to YouTube as well. The YouTube link is below down uh, in the stream links. You can check out episode 1 and 2 if you want to catch up before we move on to the next stream. I know you're here right now, so we'll, we'll do this little review. But uh, if not, you can start there. Okay, so that was nah. Me. One. Two. Three. One. Two. Three. Very simple, right? Me. And later on, you'll learn that this is a grammar particle um, that indicates, like, at or in or blah, blah, blah. But I don't want to confuse you yet, so don't think about that yet. Me. New. All right, take your time with this one. One. Two. All right. I've seen all the streams. I just never had time to catch you live. Well, thank you. Uh, you're here now, and I appreciate that. So good. Then that means you you should be caught up. If you're following along in your notebook, um, write these. You know, keep repeating them, mixing the uh, old with the new. So this is new. One. Two. New. Arguably the most difficult of the set. So I would take your time with this one. Ne. One. And this is... So it's hard to see what's going on here, but the, the next one is all one stroke. Like that. Right? Ne. So if... So, technically, this is first, but if I split these two strokes up, the second stroke looks like this. So, this just goes on top of this. Alright? So, it looks like... That. Meh. Okay. And final, last and easiest. No. No. Possessive particle. All right. Let's uh, move on. Next on the chart, we have... Ha. And I'm going to make a point about this very briefly about grammar as well, but first let's write it. Ha. Remember, you can come down here. You can you can check it out. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Ha. Ha ha ha. Funny joke. One, two, three. Ha. All right. What's the point about grammar here? I do not want to confuse you yet. Whenever you see this in probably 99% of words, it will be pronounced with an H. Ha. However, if this is used by itself, not in a word, if it's used by itself as a piece of grammar, it's actually still written like this, but pronounced wa. So... Well, let us sink that into your neuron cavity there for a second. As a matter of fact, where was it? It was here. If you remember this, I said it was the topic marker particle. Um, and you notice when I said that, it did associate with the pronunciation wa with a W. That's the only 
major time you're going to see it. Like, if you spelled Konnichiwa, it would also be spelled with this, uh, but it's pronounced wa, but there's not a lot of times where it's pronounced with a W. That This is, like, the major time that it is. All other times it'll be pronounced ha, so that's how I want you to learn it when you're writing the hiragana. But I want you to just know in the back of your head, because we're going to move on to this grammar at some point, that it can also be pronounced this way when it's used as a grammar particle. Okay, and later on I'll, I'll go over that it's it always connects something in between it to des to say something is. Okay, but that's still a little ahead of where we're at right now. Okay, so that was ha. All right. Next up on the chart, we've got he. He. That one's kind of easy, too. Somebody's sticking their tongue out, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't like making that stuff up to remember, because then it just... It's like you start associating it with things that it isn't, and it's just weird. So, this is... He. Okay. Hey, let's uh, go over here. What's gonna pop up if we just type he? <gasps> Fire! And you'll notice it has its own kanji. Uh, excuse me. Can we click this? Thank you. This is how you can get to um, that pound sign kanji section, by the way. If you just click it in the dictionary, it'll also take you there. So you don't have to type it in. Um, I'm not going to teach you this kanji right now, but I just want you to know. Uh, he is fire. So just by learning this uh, one hiragana. Now, if you don't write it in kanji, it's not going to be clear that you're saying fire unless you have context around it. Like um, you're, you're writing a sentence that clearly indicates you're talking about fire. Because uh, if you just wrote he, uh, people would not know that you're talking about fire, because it could mean a, a bunch of different things, or it could just be the character. Reaper Link says, I think I get it. Perfect, that's what we're here for. Um, but, you know, at some point, you, you'll start learning kanji, and, um, you know, that's one of them that will come early, because it's a simple kanji. So, this is he. Alright. Who? This is another funky one, but it can be fun to write, you know? Let's check it out. One, two, three, four. Right? So you're just kind of starting in the center here and then working your way in from the outside. Okay. One, two, three, four. Who? And to be honest, uh, I'm being a little bit of a tryhard here, trying to match this uh, little, like, <laughs> serif stuff going on here. You don't really have to... Like, if I was just writing this freehand, um, and as most Japanese people would probably do, I wouldn't be doing it so slowly and, like, trying to get it perfect like that. I'd probably just close that off like that, do that, one, two. All right, this is more... This is closer to how I would just do it freehand. This is who. For the ones that have multiple strokes like this, uh, if you're learning for the first time, I would slow it down. If you watch this on YouTube, pause it. Remember what I said. Pause it. Go back and repeat the other characters up to this point, and then try to recall this one from memory, because that's how you really um, get the most out of this method. When you're doing those older characters, you're reviewing them, so it's good for that those portions of characters, but you're giving yourself a little bit of time to see if you still remember the one you just did or not. And that's what's really making the connections in your head. And if you didn't remember it, look at the chart. You go back to your chart. Oh, that's what it was. Right? We just did who. And then you do it again, all right? So that's how you process through this whole thing without having to write the one character a hundred times in a row. That's how we do it. All right? That was who. Okay, next we have one of the easiest characters. Hey. Boom. It's, that's it. Give yourself a little break from all those uh, difficult ones there. One stroke. Hey. Okay. Is this gonna, it's gonna show up uh, if I search for it? What are we, so let's just, uh, let's say we're curious. What, what do we got here? This is, this could be used as another piece of grammar. We're not gonna go over this right now. I just want you to know. 
you are technically learning things that you can be used here soon um two we're heading towards something so um, that's what we're going to learn a little bit later uh and it can also be used as fart ladies and gentlemen let's bring in the fart humor right now hey you could just be saying fart all right uh flatulence yeah uh funny jokes tonight courtesy of valen hark hey that is it and wrap it up with the last one on that chart we just did hit now we are at hole one two three four hole all right one two three four hole this is actually don't don't do it that way don't don't try to make it into oh what are you doing what are you doing valen do this properly. All right. Hole. Okay. And hey, before we move on, remember this column. So Nani Nune No did not have anything down here telling you that you could put Ten Ten or Maru on it, right? No, it did not. So don't do it. But Ha Hi Hu He Ho, I told you this was the super special one that could use both Ten Ten and Maru. So, what happens if I put Tente on here? Well, if you look back at your chart, it'll tell you that this would say... Bowl. Uh, what happens if I put Maru on it? Now it says... Pull. Again, you do not have to do this now. Do this after you learn all the basic hiragana. But start getting used to seeing them, because it's that easy. Once you know whole. Once you've done everything, you can go back and while you're doing your your whole script out on the page, I U A O K K K K K K K when you get to these, you can write whole, and then you can also write bowl, and if you want, you can write pull. And that's how you can start memorizing those at that point. We're not there yet, but just showing you for now, okay? And that goes the same for for all of these. So this could be ba instead of ha. It could be pa. This could be he, be, pi, hu, bu, hu, he, be, pe, ho, bo, po. Okay? It just depends if you adding ten ten maru or not. All right? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up today's uh, five and six. Well, I should say, if you're doing it the smoothest way you should be doing these one column per day i'm doing them two per day for those little tryhards out there little slick dogs that want to really pack it in every day uh like i said do not don't you dare try to go do three plus columns a day don't do it you will think that you're learning faster and you will come to recognize very swiftly that you're actually screwing yourself and uh, you're not remembering them as well as you would. It's just, there are limits. And know your limits and stick to them, all right? I recommend doing one column a day if you want a max of two. That's why I'm introducing two a day right now. If you just started out and you rushed over here from the first and second video, what are you doing? Time out for you. I will give you a time out. Don't make me do it. You know I hate to do that. So, uh, that wraps it up for the today's uh, hiragana, right? Let's get rid of this. Thank you. Thank you. So, do we want to do a quick little macaroni and review? Uh, oh, my God, the food jokes. When are they going to end? Uh, I'm going to do everything now in order. For those of you who really are still starting from this, the top, like I'm trying to tell you to do. Ah, e, u, e, o, ka, ki, ku, ke, ko, sa, shi, su, se, so, right? Ta, chi, tsu, te, to. And remember, we started today at, at, why do I always do that? That is, stop making a long toenail, 
Valen, you idiot. We started today uh, after this point. So today we started with Nani Nune no, right? So am I, am I above my head here still? Okay, I think we have we have clearance. Nah. Ni. Be careful. Nu. And then the one after that. Ne. Okay, these are objectively the hardest ones we'll get through today. Possibly for the rest of the, the chart. So, uh, give yourself a break if you're having a rough time with these, because they look similar and they've, they've got a lot going on. Ne. No. Okay. And then we moved on to Ha. He. Ku. He. And let's jam this one right here. Sorry about that. Ho. So this is where you've made it up to, to this point, hopefully. And that marks your review for the day. Uh, let's uh, go over the kanji we learned yesterday, too. That's part of the review, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Watashi. Okay. Watashi. And this means I or me. So, honestly, you don't have to be doing this right now, but I think it's a good idea while you're learning the hiragana to throw in a, a few, just a couple of those basic kanji that I'm going to introduce to you into this mix. Yeah, just throw it in at the end of whatever you're doing, or let's say you decided that uh, whenever you get to... Uh, the end of soul right here, you, you decide you want to throw in watashi. That's fine too. Just put it in there somewhere. And then every time you repeat the pattern, you throw in the kanji, and that's getting memorized along with everything else. Okay? And remember, we also today went over watashi no. Since this is me, or I, and this is the possessive particle, you now know how to say my or mine, depending on the context. So somebody asked you, is that yours? And you just said watashi no. I, uh, you, you should say watashi no desu, but we haven't gone over that grammar yet. If you just said watashi no, it's like, yeah, that's mine. However, so that's, if this is just by itself, it's like mine. If you put something after this, like watashi no inu, my dog, it becomes, it doesn't become mine a dog, obviously. It becomes my dog. In Japanese, there is no my or mine. It's just, however the sentence is constructed, it's clear what you're trying to say. All right. That was the review for the day, and uh, to close it out, I'm going to give you one brand new kanji. Look at that. I'm going to give you a super easy one, too. Boom. Hito. Okay, this is what it looks like. And if you want, you can jump over here. Remember what I said, it's not going to show up on here because it's kanji, it's not a hiragana. We have to go over to the jisho and type in. You can type it in in romaji if you want, and it should pop up. Um, look up online how to enable Japanese language for the win for Windows. It's easy. You just like go into language settings and like you might have to, depending on your version of Windows, you might have to download the Japanese language support pack or something like that. But it's it's easy to do. And then you can set up a hotkey there to switch between English and Japanese. And while we're here, I think I'll just throw this in. This stream is already running a little long, but. Um, People ask, they, they think like, do you have like a million characters on your keyboard? No. I don't think... Oh, oh! Do you see this? You can kind of see what's going on there. It, it's a regular keyboard, and there you can see there are actually hiragana characters on some of the keys towards the top of each key. By the way, it's, it's QWERTY. It's just set up the same way. There are hiragana characters there, but uh, nobody uses those. I should say nobody. Some freaks, weirdos, use them. Um, but here's here's how it's actually typed. This isn't the point of today's lesson, but I, I get this question a lot. If I'm typing it out, let me do it slowly so you can see what's going on. I'm typing, I'm starting with H, just like I would type in Romaji, and then I type I, and it changes it to he. And it's already predicting here what it thinks I'm going to go for. Am I going for hito? Am I going for he? Or am I trying to type out in Romaji, he, to? And then a bunch of other stuff that starts with he. It'll pull out too. Um, so if I'm typing quickly, I'll just type in he, to. And if I, it, it'll put it in hiragana first. If I press spacebar, 
it'll change it to that kanji. And, and let's say, no, I didn't want that kanji. I want a different one. This is the most common usage for hito, so it's going to show up first. It's very, very uh, easy. It seems like this would be crazy to do, but the computer is very good at knowing what you're trying to say. It'll bring up the most common ones first. It'll learn the words that you use most often, and it'll change to those first. If I press space here again, here's another way, a completely different word to say hito. And then we can go down the list. There's other things. So if it's there's like a really rare word that I'm trying to type with hito, it's probably somewhere down in the list. And that means, yeah, I would have to take a second to go and find it. But if it's really rare, that's not really bothering me in daily life because I'm typing it like, what, once a month or something? So that's how this works, okay? Hito, boom, done. Okay. Man, person. I do not think it should say man here. I think it should just say person because there are words for man and woman and, and other things like that. This should this should just be person. I don't think it should say human either because that should be ningen. That's another word. But as a, as a translator, I'm going to complain about everything. Uh, so, let's get back here. Hito. That's what it looks like. That's This is the kanji. This is the hiragana for it. Remember, all kanji can be read with hiragana when you're first learning them. This is like the answer key for what this kanji is. <laughs> so, you looked it up in the dictionary. You can go over here where it says kanji. You can click this. And it'll take you to the stroke order right here. If you want to click this, it'll do it in order here. And I want you to take a look at this real quick because you'll see here this font is written completely different than this font or uh, handwritten stroke I should say um, these are the same exact character it's it's just stroked differently this is like the extreme version of the strokes this is just smoother so it looks like it's connected further up but really the stroke is down in the middle like that so it starts up here and goes down and then it comes from the middle and goes out so let's do that right now So I'm going to first do it like the, the font here. One, two, hito. Now, if you want to do it really more like calligraphic or like, a, I guess how it technically should be, it's more like this, right? It starts from the middle there and goes out. And you can get, if you want to get like really, uh, you know, calligraphy about it, oh, that's kind of messy. You can kind of do more like that, but this is it. It's it's like the, it's just the top of a triangle, guys. I mean, that's it. Hito, <laughs> and this means person. Here's what, okay, here's what I would recommend you do. Throw this into the mix of your memorization, because it's easy. When you're doing your a, i, u, e, o, and let's say you get to ta, chi, tsu, te, to, and you finish to, maybe you throw in hito. And while you're writing it, say it, hito. And in your head, think person. That's going to help you. If you're doing this in front of somebody, tell them, look, I'm just learning Japanese, all right? That's why I'm saying, all right? If you're embarrassed about it, knock it off. Just don't be embarrassed. That person's not learning Jack, and you're learning Japanese, so tell them to go screw. All right? So that's what I would recommend you do. And you can choose to ignore this next part or not. I'm going to throw in a last bit of grammar. Reaperlink says thank you for doing. You are welcome, Reaperlinks. Love you much. Uh, I'm going to throw in a, a little bonus here. A little bonus. Last like 10, 5, 10 minutes or so. And that little bonus is specifically because we learned several things here. We can now construct yeah, we can construct all three of these next words I'm going to show you here. Let me show you. Let's turn this off. I'm going to write three words here on the screen. See if you can pronounce these before I tell you what they are. These are all here. They're all going to use hiragana we've learned up to this point. And the, the last word. Okay, these are all separate words here. What have we written? Well, you can see we used one that we learned today, so this this should be very easy. 
This is null, right? So you probably already know that. The rest of them are review. And this was from uh, the second column, right? So this is kono, sono, and ano. These are three easy words. Uh, they technically have kanji, but they're almost never written that way. These are always going to be, almost always going to be written in hiragana. So I feel okay teaching you these words right now as we're learning hiragana. If you want to memorize them, fine. If not, I will go over them again in the future. But they basically mean this, this, and here's where it's going to get tricky because this means, <laughs> this means, sono means that, and ano means that. And here's the problem. In English, we do not separate these two out like they do in Japanese. And by separate out, I mean... Um, can I move all of this up so I can give myself some space here? This we already know. If I am pointing to something... Uh, this. This phone. Okay? Kono keitai. Uh, if you wanted to... You don't know keitai yet. Uh, it's, it's like mobile phone or cell phone. Let me just say kono phone. Okay, this phone. If I said sono, sono keitai, sono phone, and if, I, if I'm holding it, that doesn't make any sense because I'm saying that. It, so you, you, already, you already know that in English. It's basically the same thing. So if I'm saying sono, that, I should be pointing to something that's not, that I'm not holding and that's not tech, like near me. It's not on my table right here in front of me. It's somewhere else and probably near someone else that I'm talking to. So let's say somebody's standing next to the table and there's a phone next to them and I'm way over here and I'm talking to them and I'm like, hey, can you get that phone for me? I would say sono. So it's that, you know, parentheses, near someone else and not me. <laughs> I don't want to confuse you, but that's 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 what it is. Now, so we have these two in English. We have this and that. Here's what we don't really have in English, because we would just still use the word that. If I am standing next to someone else, and we are both right here, and I'm pointing way out in the distance and saying that boat out on the lake, way out there, I would say ano, ano boto, ano, that boat. And so this, the nuance behind ano is... Whoa, can you even write English, Valen? That way over there. Not near us. Okay? This, that, and that. But the difference between these two that's is you're talking to someone about something near them or you're together talking about something away from all of you. Does that make sense? People will get tripped up on this a lot, so I, I did kind of want to introduce it early. So, all right, let's, you know what? Screw it, we're already over time. Let's do a little example here of what I'm talking about. Example time. Whip out your example hats. Uh, so if we wrote... Kono... Kono hito. All right. Let's say you're still memorizing this. That's why I'm going to write it in Romaji. I would never write this in Romaji for any other reason. Neither should you. Uh, kono hito means this person. So maybe um, somebody's... To, I don't know. If this might be a little rude or, or something to say this person instead of like their name. But for the sake of an example, that's what we're going to say. Like... Uh, Somebody over in the front of the room is like, uh, hey, who took, uh, who, who took my pencil? Who did it? Oh, kono hito, this person. This is, this is the thief right here. Kono hito. And, uh, let's say we went over to... Sono hito. Sono hito. That person, remember, near you, 
I say you, this is gonna get confusing. Near... Someone else. That you're talking to, right? So, same example. The teacher is at the front of the room and says, Who took who took this pencil? Who took my pencil? And you say, Sono hito. You're probably pointing to someone that's near the teacher at the front of the room, not near you. Okay? And lastly, let's whip this back out. So that's Sono. If we just change this to. Ano hito. This is again that person. But. Same example now. Teacher's at the front of the room. Who took my pencil? You and the teacher are looking out the window of the classroom. And there is a naked man out in the snow running around with a pencil in his hand. And you say. Ano hito. That guy out there, that person, that's nowhere near us. Anohito. All right, these are not the best examples. And for all you crazy, like, uh, you know, crack out your Japanese books and be like, uh, Valen, uh, well, technically, uh, blah, 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 blah. You shut up, whoever you are. I am going to teach you how these words are used in everyday life. I don't care what it says in your book. I don't care what some academic told you I'm a translator trust me this is how these work como somo amo they're very simple you can use them with anything we can replace this word with you know which I haven't taught you yet but I like saying for some reason it means dog that dog way over there you know this dog right here next to me right and if this was somo it would be that dog like near you over there near you Okay. Does that make sense? You getting it? This was today's extra credit, super special grammar lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let's uh, close this out. Thank you. Hey. Thank you again for joining me this evening. Uh, I will go and throw this up on YouTube real quick. Uh, remember, in your notebook... You should be repeating all the old characters as you do the new ones. Keep throwing in the old as you do the new. If you do that, I guarantee you, you're going to start memorizing them. You probably, if you're doing this method correctly, have noticed that you've already got down pat IUAO, hopefully. Um, keep doing that. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. Uh, since I self-studied uh, and I told you I never took a Japanese class. Um, how did that work for me? Discipline. I did not stop doing this. I kept doing it every day. Um, I, yeah, I took breaks sometimes, like a day or two. I would not go... Oh, let me tell you this right now. Do not go a week or two without doing this because you'll start forgetting everything. You need to keep using it. Reaperlink says, Thank you. I've been trying to learn Japanese far and well. I think I know what you're saying there, Reaper Links. Um, it is difficult if you don't live in Japan. I will give that to you all, but uh, you can do it. You absolutely can. I started this before I came to Japan uh, for a while now, and you make it seem so easy to learn. Reaper Links, you're such a sweetie. I love you. Thank you for sitting here through through the whole lesson and uh, keeping me company here with the Twitch bots. Uh, and to the rest of you lurkers, I love you too. I'm, I'm here to share the love. Um, it is easy to learn. I think Japanese gets a bad rep because people think that it's just so difficult. They look at the 10,000 characters and their head just explodes. It, there's just chunks of head all over the room on the walls. Uh, you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to explode your head. Um, because if you do it the way I'm showing you, you're taking it in little chunks that are very manageable. So, and this is a good point actually. Do not think about all the characters. Just, what's the point in bogging yourself down with that, like, weight? That, oh, I, st I still have so many kanji to learn. There's so many characters. I just can't. Uh. All you're doing is constipating your brain and your bowels at the same time. Don't do it. Um, it's not necessary to worry about. Just take what you're doing right now. You're setting up through this method. 
accomplishable goals for each day. One column of hiragana or two at max, and maybe a kanji or two. And when we finish hiragana and katakana, we're going to do more than one kanji a day. We're going to do like four or five or six words that sometimes are made of one kanji, sometimes are made of two. And we're going to use the same method of writing it in a notebook to memorize it. And then as we're memorizing it, we're also going to do a little, um, little grammar exercises so that you start understanding how to construct the sentences. And that's going to help you not only memorize uh, the word that you're trying to study in kanji, but it's also going to help you understand how to start speaking and using Japanese as well. So we are still in the little babby stages here, uh, setting up hiragana and katakana. But the point is, this is why it seems easy to learn. It's because you're taking it in very accomplishable steps. So t tomorrow comes around, and instead of feeling like you have the weight of 10,000 kanji burning down upon your soul, instead you feel, hey, I just accomplished and I, I have memorized all these characters already. So you're feeling good instead of feeling like uh, you hate yourself. And I, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of hating myself. I just want to feel good. And that's what we're here about. So again, uh, we will continue this. Um, right now, I'm taking a break from scavenging the wastes of uh, 2162 here in the future, uh, post-apocalyptic Japan. Uh, at some point, I'm going to have to get out there and scavenge, so the, the time slot on this might change, but uh, I will always upload them to YouTube, and uh, you can catch me here. Uh, if you follow, the notifications will go out live at the time that I go live. So, you know, just uh, slam that little like and follow and subscribe, and uh, if you want to, if you want to be crazy and give me money, I, <laughs> I mean, there's a donate button too, but uh, all right, all right. Calm down, Valen. We're doing this for the people, not for the money. With that said, Reaper Links, uh, Wyver Ticks, to, to the rest of you, to the Twitch bots, uh, to those of you sending me pictures of your studying and showing me all your characters that you've been doing up to now, I love it. Keep it up. You're doing a good job. Uh, and with that said, uh, I'll see you next time. So you have yourself a nice little night. Take care. <laughs>